Welcome back to the Elite Automation YouTube channel. I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. Today, we're gonna to be setting up the WLAN from Phoenix Contact. This is the WLAN 1100. I believe there's a 2100 as well. I like to start off by thanking Neff Engineering for getting us this product, for letting us utilize this product to create this video. Uh, today we'll be basically going over the setup of it, talking about this device just a little bit. So this particular device right here is an access point. It can be a client or it can be a mesh network device. Um, so an access point basically means it transmits a wireless signal so that way other devices can log into it. Uh, if it's a client, that means it is one of the devices trying to log into an access point. Uh, so that may be like on the I.O. side of things. Um, it really doesn't matter per se. But generally, you're going to have this access point on the computer side of things, on, on your main enclosure side of things. And then with the mesh network, essentially this thing just needs 24 volts. It will repeat the signal. So you could have your main access point, let's say, for instance, 100 feet away. You can have a bunch of these, say, for instance, every 10 feet from each other, 20 feet from each other, and transmitting that signal from the first access point all the way down an entire line if you need to. So a couple things that we're gonna need to get this thing set up is we're gonna need a RJ45 connector. It comes with a power uh, connector right here. They're just the push-in style for like ferrule connections. And so here you have the wiring configuration. You just need 24 volts on the top one, zero volts on the second one. The third one down will be our factory reset. Now we're gonna go ahead and start off with this device by doing a factory reset. We're gonna use a RJ45 cable to plug in from this device to uh, the computer that we're gonna utilize to configure this thing. So if you want to, you can go ahead and plug it in now. Uh, so go ahead and plug in your RJ45 connector. And then go ahead and plug in your power. All right, so whenever you do the factory reset, you need to take the another hot wire and you need to touch it to the factory reset for about 10 seconds and then remove that, uh, that 24 volt signal. And then you should go into a mode where you'll see a uh, violet or purple indicator light. And this will basically state that you're back in factory reset mode. Uh, when in factory reset mode, it shuts off the wireless signal. So there will be zero wireless signal transmitting from uh, this device. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go into the software setup side of things. Um, we'll be putting a link for this uh, drive folder that we used to set up this device and has different documentation and notes and you'll be able to download this stuff. Uh, so it'll be down in the description below. We're gonna start off by coming in here and right clicking open our network and internet settings. We wanna change adapter options. As of right now, uh, our Wi-Fi is disabled. So right here, you can enable and disable your Wi-Fi. Uh, you wanna disable any network card that is going to try to reach out to another network. Uh, one, you could just end up with network conflicts, and two, uh, if one of the networks has internet, it'll almost always try to choose that network um, to connect through. So we're gonna go over here to our ethernet adapter, our hardwired ethernet adapter. We're gonna right click, go to properties, now, if you're familiar with setting up devices, you've been through this process many a times. Uh, Internet Protocol version 4. But just in case you haven't, we're going to go through these processes again. All right, so we're going to use the following IP address. So whenever you boot this thing up, it goes into boot P mode, which essentially is waiting for a boot P software to give it an IP address. Um, if it does not receive an IP address within a certain period of time, uh, it will set to a factory default IP address. And so I pull up this documentation here, um, and we'll scroll down. Until we find the IP address. By the way, a lot of times I'll, I'll do stuff like control find, and then we'll say like IP, you know, uh, IP address. And that's kind of like the fastest way to to search for things. Boom, and it'll automatically bring you down right here. So pretty much anytime I'm utilizing documentation, if I'm not reading the uh, index, then this is what I'll go to is this find, this find function. I use it with pretty much every software. 
So as you can see right here, our IP address will be this 169.254.2.1. So I'm going to move it, go ahead and move that out of the way and come in here. We're going to put in 169.254.2. We'll go with 2. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Nothing else is on this network besides the uh, Phoenix Contact WLAN. Also, put down in the comments below. Do you call it a WLAN, a, a W lane? How do you refer to a wireless access point? I think W lane is kind of a, a weird term. Okay, so we're gonna give it the subnet mask here, 255.255.255.0. Okay it, okay it. I like to always go back in here, in here and verify that it accepted the IP address we just gave it. Uh, there's been way too many instances where it did not accept this IP address and you go back in there and it's still set up to uh, an older IP address or uh, set up to be configured automatically. So after you do that, we'll go back to a, uh, we'll open up a Google Chrome web browser. Okay, we'll start off with a new tab. Now, uh, this is what's called a web interface. It's a web interface software. So this software is basically uh, software that is stored locally on the device and you utilize a web browser to access it. So it'll be the 169.254.2.1. Now if you wanted to, you could have uh, used boot P and then automatically gave this thing an IP address. Um, I kind of like this method just for the fact that you don't have to really mess with the, a boot P software at all. When you get to this screen here, uh, it'll look like you're logged in. It doesn't really give any type of good signifier that you're not logged in, other than right down here it says log in, and if you hover over this it says log in. Uh, so we gotta make sure we log in. The defaults for this are admin and private. P-R-I-V-A-T-E. All right, now we're logged in. You can see some of these menu options changed over here on the side. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the Wi-Fi and get the wireless access point working. Uh, I want to do that because if you change the IP address right now, what's going to happen is it's going to kick you off and then you have to go back, sign back in again, which we're going to do for demonstration purposes. Uh, but in real life scenario, you, you wouldn't really have to log back in after you do these setup parts, ex especially if everything's already working properly. <clears throat> So we go to our WLAN interface. That's what we clicked into here. Um, after you're here, here's where you're going to set your operation mode, what the network SSID is going to be, um, you know, your security mode. We'll just leave that one the same. And then your pass key, which is just a default pass key. It says to be changed. Uh, so we'll come in here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to change this operation mode to be an access point. Um, this particular video, that's what we're doing here. We're making this one an access point. Uh, make sure to subscribe because we have other videos coming out where we're going to be setting up another model of one of these. Uh, it's a different family lineup, but it also has Bluetooth uh, capabilities as well. And we're going to set that one up as a client. We're going to get that talking to uh, some I.O. and start talking to the different I.O. devices wirelessly. We have some Mac valves that we're going to go through the setup process of. Um, so that's kind of all coming along in like a, a video series here within the next few weeks or so. So we're going to go ahead and change this to, I uh, will leave a Phoenix contact and then we'll change this to Elite 001. So we had it before. Okay, now we should be able to apply these settings. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, when it comes to a network SSID, Make sure to pay attention to the cases here because this is case sensitive and it and some client devices, when you go to set these up, this is the network SSID you'll add into your client side of things. If this C happens to be uh, lowercase in your other setup and it's uppercase in here, they will not connect. They will not recognize each other. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to go back into our uh, network and internet settings, change adapter options. What we're going to do is we're going to disable our hardwired connection and we're going to enable our Wi-Fi. Uh, and basically the purpose of this is we want to verify that this uh, Phoenix contact wireless signal is live now. So we'll come in here. 
Phoenix contact right there. Boom. So as you can see, we uh, have connected with it. It automatically connected with it because we had connected in the past. So it auto-recognized its, uh, its password and its SSID. Um, the password would have been just that Elite 0001. And so now the next thing we need to do is we need to get this thing on the um, plant network or shop network, depending on whatever you're working with. So as of right now, we're still on this IP scheme. Even though we're communicating over Wi-Fi, this is the IP scheme of the current Wi-Fi signal and of this current device. So what we'll do now is we'll come over here into our network settings. Now when we go through this process here, we are going to lose connectivity to this thing. Uh, we technically do not have to reconnect with this device again if we do this properly. So we're going to go ahead and start off by changing our IP address assignment. We're going to change it to a static IP address. Uh, you know, if you have a very small shop, you may have a DHCP, um, but almost always any type of industrial automation stuff is going to be a static IP address. For our IP address, we're just going to use 192.168.0.1. You can see it popped up right there because we've done this setup before. Uh, it's just a IP address that I happen to know on our network is available. Uh, then our subnet mask will be 255, 255, 255, zero. And I'm not going to worry about putting in a gateway or anything like that. We'll apply these settings. Uh, it's basically saying, are you sure we might lose connectivity for a few moments? Let's go ahead and refresh this page. It's What, what it's going to do here is it's going to kick us off. As you can see right there, we are kicked off. Uh, we should be able to come back in here and go 192.168.0.20. Just be patient with this here. Uh, when you change the IP address, it does take a second to come back online. Uh, we are going to also go over here and verify that we are trying to connect with the proper thing. Yes, okay, so we're still connected here with the Phoenix contact. We'll just refresh here again, see if we'll load this page. All right, so we need to go ahead and go back into our network and internet settings, change adapter options, and we're going to go into the properties on this. Go to our protocol four. Uh, depending on your firewall and how your, your network is set up, you may have issues with obtain automatically. Um, so we may have to set our static IP address to be a 192.168.0.20. We'll okay it, okay it. Uh, eventually our computer would have reached through our network and, and got a hold of uh, this device, but it takes quite a bit of time, so it's just much easier for us to put in a static IP address into the computer and then load it from there. So as you can see here, uh, we are connected online with it. It has one client, which is our PC communicating to it over Wi-Fi right now. Uh, let's see. If we go into the device status, you'll come in here and you'll be able to see the IP address is now set to the 192.168.0.20. Subnet set. And the device is communicating and working. Now, you should see a uh, blue indicator light that will be blinking if you have a connection to the Wi-Fi signal and there is an active Wi-Fi signal. If you all have any more questions on this particular device, make sure to put them down in the comments below or reach out to us somewhere or another and we'll see what we can do about answering that question and uh, you know maybe making more follow-up videos with this particular device. But I just wanted to do a quick setup video so that way you knew how to set it up and you can move on with your day as quickly as possible. This, uh, this is the future of, of automation. This is the future of the industry. Things are going to go wireless. There's no other option. I think it almost makes sense that at some point in time we will be doing everything completely uh, wirelessly. You know, maybe there will be still hardwired connections where it makes sense. Thank you for sticking around. If there's anything you'd like to see in these videos, if there's any structure that you'd like to see in these videos, uh, put it down in the comments below and let us know so we can improve these videos, uh, make them quicker, faster, more informative. Anything I want now, I bring it to fruition. I'm my own boss now, I make my own decisions. I do not agree to the terms and conditions. I don't ever follow other people, I just follow intuition. Tunnel vision when I get up in the zone. Never needed nobody, did it on my own.